Let's do it. What's up, JD Aliens? Welcome back, man. Have a seat, but don't get too comfortable because we're gonna take a little field trip around my house. Why are we walking around my house? Because I want to show you the most awesome tech I've used uh, throughout this year. Stuff that's just made my life easier or better or just stuff that I really thought was cool that I want to show you guys. Most of it has been on my channel uh, as a full review. Some of it has not. I chose to keep it to myself up until now. The thing I want to start off with first is my Galaxy Note 10 Plus. This came out, I don't know, what is it, August or something like that? And I couldn't wait because I was using the Galaxy Note 8. And it was a great phone, but when this bad boy came out, I just had to have it. So let's just take a quick look at it real quick. I didn't do a review on this because I don't really do phones like that. But uh, as you can see, this thing is a beast, man. Look at the back of it. I chose not to put a case on it because I'm really not a case guy, but I did use a Slick Wraps. I think this is a Slick Wraps clear, like, self-healing kind of skin I put on the back. That way it doesn't get scratched up on the back. But as far as the phone, the battery life, man, I challenge you. I challenge you to kill this battery. I've tried over and over again, but killing this battery has been really hard. Yes, I have actually killed it, but seriously, the battery is super awesome on this phone, so I don't worry about stuff like that. And even when the battery does get low, the charger that it came with charges this thing like stupid, ludicrous fast. Prepare ship for light speed. No, 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 light speed is too slow. Light speed too slow? Yes, we're gonna have to go right to ludicrous speed. <gasps> Now get in here real quick. I'm gonna show you why I decided to start with my phone because I needed to write down all the things I wanted to show you guys. So I use my S Pen, this handy dandy S Pen right here uh, to write down all the stuff I wanted to show y'all starting with this phone. So next we're gonna go to my Microsoft mouse. Man, you know what? I know people like to use the Logitech MX series of mouses, but, or is it, is it mouses? Mouses? No, it's mice, okay. So I, I know people like to use the Logitech versions of these, but I chose to use Microsoft because I like the Microsoft keyboard and I was using another Microsoft mouse before. And this one has just been my best friend this year. I bought it like in December of 2018, but I'm putting it in my 2019 video because it's made my life so much easier. You got some programmable buttons here. Once you uh, kind of open up the app that it has, on a PC, you can customize these buttons. And what I've done is I edit a lot of videos. So these three buttons right here, I've customized them. This is my ripple back button. This is my ripple forward. And that's my, my razor tool. And then I'll press down on my uh, my scroll wheel right here for my, uh, my selector tool right there. So you can just customize this to do whatever you want to. It has a bunch of different functions, but I use it in its probably most simplest form. And I just like the ergonomics of it. This thing has been a lifesaver for me as far as making my editing a lot easier because I spend a ton of time at my computer. Now, since I spend so much time at my computer and using all these devices, ugh, life would not be the same if it wasn't for these cables right here. Let me show you this cable. So right now you're looking at the USB-C end of it. But because even in 2019, everything is not USB-C, all the things, it has a micro USB underneath it. So all you gotta do when it's time to use your updated stuff, you just put that on top of that right there, plug that bad boy into the USB-A port and you got USB-C charging. When you don't need it, when you need that old school stuff, you just take the cap off and now you got micro USB. This is one of those simple but highly effective pieces of tech that everybody should have in every bag or every drawer you got because you know, sometimes you got micro, sometimes you got USB-C, and it drives me crazy that all of my gear isn't the same thing, but these cables have been clutch in the experience of 2019. Next stop is my monitor and the uh, screen bar that I use, made by BenQ. So come on, let's go over there. Scoot yourself on over, man. Just come with me, come with me. All right, let me close. Oh, I was clicking stuff with my mouse. All right, here we go. So let's close this out, but I gotta show you this monitor. This is a 35 inch curved display that I've been using all year. BenQ sent this out. Shout out to my folks at BenQ. This monitor is super gorgeous and it's just so immersive. I played a few video games on it and it's great for playing video games. Uh, but as far as my workflow, seeing my whole Adobe Premiere uh, timeline right here and just spread it out and I can do like split screens with four screens or two, whatever I need. It's just been amazing. And it's easy on the eyes because uh, BenQ always incorporates some type of eye technology in their stuff. But look at it, man. It's got a nice stand, but you can mount it via Visa mount if you want to. And it's got this nice thin bezels right here. Gorgeous monitor, man. But since I spend so much time here at this computer editing, I was really appreciative that BenQ sent out this uh, screen bar right here. I've done reviews on some BenQ lighting products before, which would be the screen bar and the screen bar plus. The screen bar plus actually has a little knob that you can manipulate and turn it off and, 
and faded and stuff like that. I prefer to give that one to my son and keep this one for myself because I don't need any more stuff uh, cluttering up my desk area. So I opted for the screen bar, the basic screen bar, which has this super duper eye technology. You see how the light just kind of dims and adjusts to the room in the light and it casts it down right where you need it and it doesn't create any glare on your screen. You can also adjust it a little bit if you want to, to shine either directly down or more towards your keyboard if you want. I like mine about right there. You can also adjust the different color hues if you want, but you can always do the auto and it just does what it needs to do provided the light that you have. This monitor, that screen bar has helped out my workflow so much. Okay, so now let's go over back over here to my, my shooting desk. I wanna talk about these gimbals, man, since we're talking about my workflow. But first I wanna talk about the camera I'm using to shoot this video with and the gimbal I'm shooting the video with, which is the Sony a6400 and the uh, DJI Ronin SC. Amazing products. I've used other gimbals and I'm really a Sony fanboy when it comes to camera, but as far as gimbals, I've tried some of the Zyun stuff and it works great, but I gotta tell you, man, DJI has it hands down when it comes to gimbals and stuff like that. The gimbal's been very easy to learn how to operate and manipulate, and it's just been very reliable for me, so that's why I like it so much. If you're in the market for a gimbal, that's definitely the one you might wanna check out if you're using a mirrorless camera. Now, as far as my camera, I'm not a camera guy either when it comes to reviews. I don't really do that stuff. A lot of people got those grounds covered, but the A6400, I will tell you, really enjoyed having the flip screen on it because it requires me not to have to use a monitor because when I'm looking at myself, I can see myself right now. And the autofocus is actually creepy. I mean, no matter where you put your head in the camera, there's a little box just chasing your face around and it's just creepy how much of a stalker this camera is. So if you want super tack sharp autofocus on faces and animals and stuff like that, and you want reliable, like just a reliable camera that you have a monitor on, that you can flip it up and stuff like that, A6400 is definitely the way to go. Let's talk about this DJI Osmo Mobile 3. Now I have done some reviews on some other mobile gimbals, which work really, really well, but for some reason I keep going back to the Osmo Mobile 3, simply because it is so easy to use. Let me fold this thing back up the way it's supposed to be. Once you get it folded up and you're just taking it out for use, it's super easy to balance. You just kind of put it right in the middle, just like that pick it up and turn it on and it's ready to go. And once you get that thing turned on, it, I mean, it's just an awesome gimbal. Two clicks takes it to either portrait or landscape mode. It's got active track foggle and it's just super portable. It's not the smallest uh, handheld phone gimbal on the market, but it's definitely still portable. The only thing I really, really, really do not like about this thing is that it will not stand up by itself without a tripod. You have to get a small tripod for it. Other than that, this is definitely a must have for 2019 and even going forward for 2020 because it's a very stable and reliable gimbal for the phone. Super easy to use as far as like consumer experience. See, I'm a camera guy, so I really know how to use these things without even really looking at instructions. But for the average person, uh, they might not know how to use these things. And this one is very, very user friendly. Even though I'm having trouble with it right now as far as locking it in place. <laughs> I always struggle with this part right here. But as far as usage and ease of usage, it's definitely good to go. Now let's get into some really cool stuff for your home. I'm up here in my studio and it's usually like four or five degrees difference in temperature, whether it's hot or cold, from this room to my master bathroom downstairs, clear across the other side of the house. So what I've done is I've invested into the uh, Google Nest uh, thermostat system. Come over here, let me show you this thermostat sensor real quick. So these little thermostats right here, you can hang it on the wall. It has a little deal right here so you can hang it. I just like to put mine on my desk because I really just need it to monitor this room. In the winter time, I like to keep it like 72 up here because man, it can get really outrageous as far as heat in this room because I'm sitting right next to the furnace, I guess. And uh, I have another one in my master bathroom that keeps the temperature, I don't know, no lower than 79. And I also have another one in my bathroom that keeps the temperature no lower than maybe like 68, 69 degrees, maybe at a nice, cool, comfortable 70 degrees. But the actual thermostat is downstairs. So let's go take a look at that and I'll kind of talk to you about how it balances everything in my house as far as the temperatures go. So let's take a walk. All right, so come on over here to the thermostat. That way I can show you, oh, you see how it just comes on? <laughs> That's pretty cool how it senses when you're coming. So right now the thermostat is actually set between, to keep the house uh, between 72 and 69 degrees. Uh, 72, it's actually 75 upstairs. So it read the temperature and it's gonna try to cool it 
to 72. And if it gets too cool, it's going to warm the house uh, past 70 or past 69 degrees. And you can operate it here just by kind of toggling left or right. And you can also go into the interface, but let's just take a quick look at my phone to see how the app looks. So right now in the Richardson Kingdom, it says it's between 69 and 72. It is matching the thermostat. But if I tap on that, that's when you get all your options. So right now the living room thermostat says 71. In the bathroom, it's 70. Uh, in my office, it's 75 degrees. So like I said, the house is, or the unit is trying to cool itself to 72 degrees uh, based on the temperature upstairs. If I wanted to swap it out with the bathroom, I could, or the living room. And you see how it's turning the thermostat or the unit on and off if, as I do that. So let's go ahead and quit jacking with it and put it there. And you can go into your different modes. You can set it to just heat, just cool, or heat and cool, which is something I really appreciate about this because I get tired of toggling on and off uh, between heat and cold. Cause we live in Houston and the temperatures get real crazy in the Houston area. Cause literally it, it could be like 91 degrees at noon. And then at night it's like 64 degrees in Houston. And then it's, we got snow the next day. So you just never know what the temperature is going to be like in Houston. That's why I really appreciate the Nest thermostat, but come on in the kitchen. Cause I want to show you the next thing that we got that was a Nest product that I think is super cool. Oh, ooh, look right there. That's my family. That's the fam right there. So that's my father-in-law, mother-in-law, that's my boot thing, and that's my son right there, and they're little puppies. My favorite part about the Nest Hub is that I take a lot of pictures, man, and before they were just kind of stuffed in an online album, and I never got to see them. Now, with the Nest Hub, uh, I have two of these, and they, they work on the Chromecast as well. So you can pretty much program this to be in an ambient mode and it can showcase whatever picture album you want it to showcase. It can showcase every picture you've ever taken. I don't suggest that, but it could also do just certain albums if you want to. And right now we just have it set at all my Christmas albums that I've taken pictures of, of since, I don't know, 2010? From 2010 all the way up to 2019, it's showing Christmas photos. So once the new year hits, I'll take it back to our vacation pictures or something like that. I really love it because you get to see the pictures you actually take throughout your house. My wife loves it because she gets to relive all those cool memories that we have. But it also works as your regular Google Home device. So check this out. Hey Google, turn off the main kitchen. And we just wait for a second and then it turns off the main kitchen lights. Hey Google, turn the main kitchen on. Then it'll turn it back on because I want to show you my coffee maker. I am not a huge coffee drinker, but my son, before he went to college, he wanted a Keurig. So he ended up getting this Keurig, right? This is a Keurig right here. Now I know it's just a basic thing and a lot of people probably already have them, but we got this right when he went to college. We got, we had to get our own because he wasn't gonna let us keep his. And we got this one and this thing is so freaking amazing. I had no idea. I wasn't even drinking that much coffee and I didn't find the need to spend this much money on a coffee maker, but it's just so convenient. All you gotta do is take one of these little pods. See, we don't use that name brand stuff. We use cheap stuff from Walmart. You just take this pod, stick it in there, you close it and you like press what size cup you want. And then all of a sudden you got coffee and it's hot and ready to go within like 60 seconds and there's no cleanup. <laughs> All you gotta do is add water to this thing like every 12 cups or something like that, and then you got coffee. How cool is that? Since then, and I, you know what? Ah, oh, my son, he got me drinking coffee, man. But since then, I drink coffee almost every day. Why? Because it's readily available. I get all different types of flavors. And yeah, so this is my life now. I drink coffee. Now this next piece of tech has definitely been one of my favorites because I have a bunch of quirks, man. I'm super OCD and I'm really quirky about stuff. And a lot of y'all don't know this about me because it was something I didn't think I could do anything about. But I hate the sight of TVs. Not while I'm actually watching it or watching Netflix or something, but when the TV is off, it's just this big black rectangle or box just sitting there like a dark void hanging on top of your uh, fireplace or on your wall somewhere or sitting on top of your dresser like this one is. So what I did was I scoured the internet. I found a company called Touchstone and I reached out to them and they were happy to work with me on this. And what we have now is one of the Touchstone TV lifts. And so when I'm done watching my TV, all I gotta do is press this button on this remote right here. And now my TV goes into its little house behind the dresser and I get to enjoy the beautiful aesthetics of my bedroom. Uh, I think a bedroom is just, you know, it's one of those rooms that, you know, you should just go to for a little serenity instead of having, you know, this big black box here. And now we just get to enjoy this artwork on the wall when we're not watching TV. And when we want to watch something, we just pull the TV out. It's almost like 
<laughs> pulling out a tablet, only it's a 50 inch TV there. So that's been pretty cool uh, as a utility this year because once again, I'm super quirky and I can't stand looking at, at that TV while it's off. And as I'm walking through the room or something like that, my eyes just get drawn to this big black box. Now I don't have to look at it. Okay, the next thing on the list is Stadia. Man, I am loving the Stadia cloud gaming system. So what I get to do now is just chillax on the big screen or I could play on my desktop or I could go into the bedroom and play. But man, I love playing Stadia games. I haven't played video games like this, like, you know, just real video games in like 20 years. That's two decades. So right now I'm a grown ass man sitting in my media room playing Stadia wirelessly. This is not a console. This is so crazy. Check that out, man. Get over there. See that? So right now on this projector screen, I am playing Stadia and losing terribly, by the way. But that's OK. You know, it's no big deal. Hold on. Let me see if I can pass these guys up so I can finish up this video. Oh, come on, come on, get in there. Get, oh, come on. So as you can see, I'm a terrible driver on grid. The fact that I could play real games on Stadia is just super cool for me, you know, with the transitions in between all the big screens and stuff. Uh, it's super cool, but I wanna talk about the big screen since I'm playing on it. My next coolest device of 2019 is the projector, the Vankyo V620. That thing has been awesome. We watch movies up here all the time. We have the LG SL9YG, I think it is, hooked up to it. It's the sound bar and everything sounds amazing. Like we don't go to the movies. I don't feel a single need to go to a movie theater because I got this going on upstairs. Like I can just save my money and invest in my house. <laughs> I just don't have a need to go to a movie theater. And now I got this, you know, basically an arcade system plugged up to it. So I'm straight, man. But the, yeah, the, the, uh, the Vankyo, uh, V620 is a great performing projector. It's a budget projector. I think this thing is about 200 to maybe 250 bucks. Uh, the things I like about it is that, as you can see, even in daylight, because I got daylight coming through this window, and then if you look over there to the left, I got daylight coming through this big old window right there. Uh, you can see the screen great. I mean, it's still bright enough to play this video game, which I'm all over the track. <laughs> <laughs> the, the projector is doing a great job doing this at 1080p. It only gets up to 1080p. Uh, and for that price, yeah, I think we're asking a lot to go over 1080p. But yeah, it does a good job of it. And you can barely hear it. It has a super quiet fan, which is something you typically do not get with budget projectors. Budget projectors usually have a ridiculously loud fan. And that's something I can't get down with because it interrupts my movie. God dang it, I'm terrible. It must be the night fever. Oh man, oh man. Okay, so the next favorite thing on the list is these. These are the X-Boom RK7s from LG. Love these speakers. You really only get one, <laughs> but uh, I actually have two because they can work in stereo mode and all kinds of syncing modes with your phone and you can do karaoke off of them. They both have, let me see, yeah, they both have mic inputs. I'm actually just using one mic right now, but you can see clearly that my voice is coming out nice and smooth. Oh yeah, baby. No, seriously, good times happen when these things get turned on. They got the party lights and all the different party modes and stuff. Definitely part of my, top whatever, top three, top five, top 10 favorite products of 2019. The party don't start until you pull this thing out. But as far as I'm concerned, no karaoke is done right without getting yourself a little loosened up first so you can sing well. Let me introduce you to my last piece of tech for 2019. Well, I don't know if this is actually called technology, but there is technology involved in making it, right? This is Hornito Tequila. This is my drink of choice, man. If you want to give me a gift, Give me some Hornitos. So this is what I like to do. You want one? All right, cool. So I like to keep mine a little chill. Sometimes I like it warm, it doesn't matter. But no matter what, I like to dress mine in some salt. Put a little salt on that rim right there. Close that up real nice and tight like. And then, you sure you want one? All right, cause it's coming, man. It's some grown man stuff right here. I already got me a lime sliced. I like mine with lime. So let me take this one. Yeah, buddy. You know what? I ain't no expert in none of this stuff, but I do know this is some damn good tequila. Look, 2019 has been a great year and I have enjoyed the tech that it has brought. I've enjoyed having a lot of it in my house. So if y'all had a good time checking out this video, make sure before you go, follow me on my social media outlets right there. Check out my other links from my other two channels because I got two more and they are on fire right now. And yeah, grab your shot and then throw your emoji hands up in the comment section and I'll see y'all at the next one. Hey, where you going? No, 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 no. Sit back down. We got to talk about this. You didn't have a good time? 
All right then, hit the subscribe button. There you go, reach down there, there you go. And then hit the bell because you need to know when I'm opening up more new stuff. You gotta come right back here and check this stuff out. Now, don't you feel like a better human being? All right, I knew you would. All right, man, I'll see you soon. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here?